Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, Kim Seltzer, a dating and makeover expert, where I will help you build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. I'm back doing another episode of Where Are They Now? And for those of you who hadn't heard this episode before, I'm going to recap. So as you know, I coach a lot of people. And of course, you have heard me coaching people live on this podcast with some of my Coaching with Kimmy episodes. And I also have a ton of clients who you don't hear and I send off into the world after coaching with them. And sometimes I don't know what happens to them. But a lot of times I do, and it's always a privilege and amazing when people come to me who have had success working together. And it's so amazing and rewarding when I hear these countless success stories and I hear about how they often find love. And sometimes it's just even them being happy. So I do these Where Are They Now episodes to inspire and motivate you by hearing what happens to people after I work with them. And whether that is on a podcast or working with them over time as clients or they're in my programs, I hope you listen to these and get inspired by people's successes and know that success can happen to you too. And it all starts with a call. So today I am bringing on a beautiful woman inside and out who I met actually during someone else's um, group program. And it was a virtual workshop. I had hopped on there and I think we were talking about sexy confidence and flirting, if I remember right. And she shared in the workshop that she was a widow who was having a hard time dating after a relationship she had gotten into. Um, but it was just hard for her getting out there and date. She was definitely a relationship person and had very little to no dating experience and was feeling kind of daunted by the whole process. And the thought of flirting was pretty much non-existent. I do remember that (laughs) and knew that she was kind of closed off in her body language and very much in her head. I think she had been a little bit disheartened with the whole dating process and was definitely burnt out. Um, And she admitted also being guarded and serious and had a hard time being open and playful. And on top of all that, she was a high achiever and she was outcome driven. And that's what made her so successful in her career. But it did not help her when it came to being present and having fun on dates. And I will say that she was a little picky. So she was vetting these guys hard. And I also had to point out how her clothes were hiding her beautiful figure. And this is a gorgeous woman. And she realized that in this process, she didn't really even like having that attention or being seen. So in a lot of ways she was hiding. So after our first call together and, you know, doing some talks and she's going to talk about that, she decided to join my co-ed dating retreat called Dating Reimagine that includes virtual classes and a three-day live event so that she could learn how to date, flirt. She did a style makeover with new pictures and really get used to being seen and increase her sexy confidence overall. As we worked together in the program, she realized also how much power she was kind of giving away to herself. And she definitely wasn't expressing her needs. She's very much a caretaker, which is a beautiful part of her. But I think she just kind of got lost taking care of herself and seeing herself as first. And she didn't know how to really let men earn her. So after learning some fundamental dating and flirting skills through the practice in the group, gaining a sexy style, which allowed her to be more confident to go online and learn to be more vulnerable and share her needs, her confidence soared. And she started dating men. Guess what? She never would have given a chance to before and became more open. And before she knew it, she met one of those guys who she would never would have given a chance to before who is still in her life today and happier than others. So I will let her tell you the rest of the story because it is quite a beautiful story. Welcome, Leslie. Are you there? Yes. Yes, I'm here. Hi, Kim. Hi. God, (laughs) I don't even know where to start with you. So I... 
when when you were listening to that story, like, do you remember that woman that I first met? I do. You know, it's <laughs> funny because you had there were some um, layers of her that I had kind of forgotten or aspects of, you know, myself at that time that I'd kind of uh, forgot. But yeah, definitely. I think that that's a pretty good description of where I was when we, um, you know, when we first ran across each other. It is weird. I, I love that you don't remember some of that too, because that's a true testament to like how far you've come. But I'm sorry, I interrupt you. What were you going to say? No, I just, I, you know, I remember even just tuning into that online workshop thing and going, mm -hmm. God, why am I still even looking at this stuff? <laughs> 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 I've been so ready to really just, you know, at least give up temporarily, but maybe I would have come back to it, you know, but I was just like, oh, this is just not for me. I was so overwhelmed at the process of getting out there again. Well, let's talk about that because I mean, if you can rewind to that kind of yeah. period yeah. of your life, like what was, what were you thinking? What was going on? Why was dating hard? Well, so, you know, what I had done um, is that basically I got into a relationship, um, you know, that lasted two years mm -hmm. very quickly you know, after I got onto the, um, you know, dating apps, I met somebody that was a gentleman, someone very nice, but he wasn't the right man for me. But I had no idea that that was the case or who I really was or what I was looking for at that time. And, you know, true to form, I jumped into a relationship because, well, I don't think I'm, I was comfortable you know, dating. I just, I was looking for, or I thought it was, you know, I, I just was looking for a boyfriend, you know, and I, and I, and I selected one, but, you know, uh, I guess it was a learning experience. And like you told me later, you know, a lot, there are, it's like a, a lot of people have those kind of transitional relationships, you know, and that's definitely what that was. Yeah, you said something that's so true. And I've been talking a lot about it, actually, as we've been listening to The Golden Bachelor, and it's been highlighting mm -hmm. just this part of somebody's life where you're dating in the second act. And, you know, when you're younger, you kind of look for, yeah, like your next boyfriend or girlfriend in ways of settling down, having a family. And then when right. time happens, and you're getting back out there later in life, you're still in that mindset. You know, like we yeah. were, learned, we were taught to date as if to find your boyfriend and girlfriend. And now in the modern world and the age that you're at now, it's totally different. So yeah, talk about that a little bit. Well, I suppose it is totally different. And I, um, I started to see that more as, you know, you and I worked together, although I did end up in a long-term committed relationship and I'm you know deliriously happy I really am and you know me I'm not a person who gets deliriously I <laughs> I'm very sort of pragmatic about most things you know but anyway so you know I I guess I still was looking for a wonderful long-term committed relationship but you know uh, as a result of us working together I had come around to thinking maybe that's not the only way to date, you know, I mean, I, because it was not working particularly well for me to, to only be searching for the next Mr. Right, you know, mm -hmm. and, and being so outcome driven, then I was not really present for the people I was meeting just for the sake of meeting them and, you know, and enjoying my life, you know? Yeah. So, um, I think when I did start to approach dating, you know, more from that perspective and not from, you know, I'm going to go on this date and let's see if this is the guy, you know, and, uh, and that, as it turned out, that openness is what I really think, uh, you know, brought me 
to where I am today, you know? Yeah. So, I'm glad you mentioned that. Cause I know I described it a little bit in the beginning, but I'd love for you to share more about that kind of shut down woman, you know, like what was going yeah. on then? Cause I know we, we kind of unpacked a little bit just in ways of the vulnerability and expressing yourself, your body language, all of that. Yeah. So I think that, um, really I never had, I really never had come out of my shell or opened up to the possibility, you know, of, and you know, who I was and what I, you know, what, what my needs were, what I really wanted from a relationship and what I brought to the relationship. Like Mm -hmm. I hadn't looked at really any of that in depth. Um, you know, certainly when I came out of sort of my little over a year of just grieving and then I sort of came back to life and then, but, but even when I got out there and I thought I was ready to date and I realized that even getting into the relationship that I got into, I, it was just kind of going through the motions, you know, because I thought, I just thought, well, that's, I mean, I'll be happier if I have a partner and you know he seemed good enough but i i wasn't happy and he wasn't happy and you know thank goodness we both figured that out Mm -hmm. but it wasn't until so so at the point that that ended you know i was just like okay you know like i don't know that was kind of i was looking back on it now i don't think it was a waste of time but at that point i was like I just wasted two years of my life, you know, wh- why, why did I do that? I don't, I just couldn't bear the thought of going back to the app and start trying to date again. And I was just, you know, probably mildly depressed and mm-hmm. not at all optimistic about my prospects, you know, for, um, you know, enjoying dating much less, you know, finding someone to really build a life with, you know? So I was, I was pretty closed down when we met for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, And, you know, the interesting thing that you said about, you know, that I was being pretty picky, but, you know, the criteria that I was using was not what was going to make me happy. You know, I mean, like I just I got into a relationship with somebody didn't even live in my city. You know, we didn't we didn't see each other. We we couldn't see each other often enough and continuously enough to really make it so that we really knew each other. It was like every time we got together, it was just like we were on a long weekend, you know, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so sort of so um, I, I don't think I had been really willing to open myself up until you know, after we started working together and I didn't realize that I thought, Oh, I'm such an open, mm-hmm. open book, you know, and mm-hmm. I wasn't at <laughs> all. I was not, you know, making myself vulnerable or putting myself out there at all. Yeah. Well, and I think it, it and there's so many layers to that too, right? Like after you mm-hmm. lose someone and, you know, it, there's a lot of, things that you do to protect yourself too from moving forward. And I remember having a conversation with you too, that even like with that guy that you picked, he wasn't available really. Right. You know, and then there were some other people who weren't available and then we had to have Mm -hmm. that hard conversation. Well, Leslie, like how available are you? Right. And I think, yeah, you like seeing that. And as you were opening up, um, that it was a different kind of like person chiming back into you, you know, and it's right. like we're all mirrors, you know, what we put out is what we get back. And I loved mm-hmm. that you, you started seeing that. And, and along those lines, I want to talk about the flirting. So, cause that's yeah. that, that, part of what was shutting you down too, is like your light had been dimmed. Your clothes were dull. Like you remember yeah. that girl? Yes. Yes, I do. And, um, I still have to sort of, uh, you know, remind myself 
I hear your voice still in the back of my mind, you know, sometimes when I'm getting dressed to go out or, you know, I'm like, come on, Leslie, you know, shine it a little brighter. You don't have to be so, <laughs> you know, because I, you know, you don't want, um, especially you don't want somebody you're dating to see you as trying too hard or overtly like, you know, I always wanted to be, you want the person to be attracted to you. You want them to be crazy about you, but you want it to look effortless, you know? Right. So I, I don't think I quite, you know, got that completely right all those years when I, you know, I mean, I would just, I, I tend to dress in a pretty classic way, but not in a way that said, hey, I'm, you know, I'm fun and I'm really out here and, you know, so anyway, um, that was kind of an eye opener. And then now I kind of forgot what the question was, but no, um, it's okay. It was about <laughs> really being seen is what we're talking yes. about. And also yeah. like in ways of flirting, oh, flirting and, and yeah, yeah. And being open. And cause part of it was the way you dress. And I, oh my God, when you all see her, you know, before and after picture, like your after pictures that we took at the retreat are just incredible. Like, yeah, and everybody, those were so oh, and everybody saw like the men at the retreat were like fawning over you just like <laughs> that. And, um, <laughs> even, even, yeah, but they, the you know what though, in the nicest way, I mean, they were very classy about it. It's not mm -hmm. like they're, you know, Oh, no, totally. But no, like I mean, I, I like I was worried. So I would want your listeners to know in your programs. I mean, the men were such gentlemen and yet mm -hmm. also so vulnerable and so willing to be open. You know, it was a, an amazing experience. I mean, that mm -hmm. that that really uh, I think that in-person retreat experience after weeks of talking to the group in our, mm -hmm. you know, our virtual classes and getting to know each other was so incredibly powerful. I, I, it, it is hard to almost explain. To yeah. People. And I love yeah. that you're highlighting that. Cause it's, uh, you know, for me to also watch you kind of be in your cocoon and then, mm -hmm poking holes in the cocoon as time was going on and you were doing the work. And then to the end where you're this like butterfly that was, I mean, I never thought in a million years you'd be putting on cat ears and red lipstick going out on the town. Like you, you yeah. did it. <laughs> I, know. <laughs> I know. I mean, when I first met you, I'm like, I don't know if I can do the ears thing with her. Yeah. You, right. You no, and, I thought but, I thought I didn't think I would do that either. I thought I was thinking to myself, well, you know, that's that's nice. Kimmy gets those people to do that, but you know, it <laughs> doesn't look like that's for me. But you know, in the group, I mean, you're just so sort of uh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? But you're like uh, drawn into the whole energy. It's the energy. Yes. yes. Yeah. It's the Actually, energy of the group yeah. and. And it's really, um, yeah, it's just sort of I felt revitalized by the group, you know, and actually not even revitalized, but like energized in new ways that I hadn't even experienced before, you know. Oh, wow. So, what are some of those ways? Like, you well, like, um, well, when you say sexy confidence, you know, I just that term sort of, I knew I, I knew that I needed to access it, mm -hmm. but I had no idea what that would feel like or look like, you know, and I just dreaded front, you know, and any exercises or something that was going to make me try to hone that skill because I just felt like it was going to be so awkward, you know, yeah. but, but it like, in, in our group, it was like, we were all so vulnerable with each other and you get so much, really, it felt like genuine, positive feedback every step of the way from the group who would like, you know, they, I mean, they never knew me before, so they didn't have any of these, um, sort of preconceived notions I had about who I was and how, 
I presented myself. So for example, when we do some, that exercise, you know, where like people, you have a piece of paper on your back and people write down, you know, things about you, you know, certain mm -hmm. traits that you have mm -hmm. or something. And, you know, all, I mean, they were also upbeat and outgoing and friendly and, and, um, and, you know, like made people feel comfortable and, I seem so sure of myself and I'm like, are they talking about me? <laughs> so I discovered these parts of myself that I, you know, hadn't really tapped into, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, I knew, I know that they're there because like with people that I know and am comfortable with, you know, I might behave in some of those ways that, but I certainly didn't think that was, coming through or would really come through like in a dating environment you know exactly well because I was so. going to ask you like with I mean all, all the aspects that you're talking about like from the group to different things like what were some aha moments for you while we were working together that really kind of flipped the script so to speak and like what you were telling yourself and also like how you were a dater after that it because I want to talk about how you attracted your man but but just like leading up to that what what were those moments well first of all I, I think um one thing that really rung a bell for me was when you and I were talking you know at the very beginning that first phone call mm -hmm. and you know my I was having the conversation with you and I thought it was amazing how, uh, you know, how much what the things you were saying to me were like resonating with me. And I could feel like, you know, you were, we were making a connection. You were understanding where I was coming from. But then in terms of like me actually being willing to commit to, re you know, registering for your program, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I felt resistant to that. I mean, just going into the call, I was like, yeah. oh, I don't, you know, and it, it wasn't until you said something like, you know, if, if you don't do this, that's fine. But, but stop putting everything else, you know, before yourself. I mean, when, if not now, when are you going to invest your time and your energy and your resources into yourself, you know, and not just finding yourself a man, because that's not really what your program is about. It's kind of, for me anyway, <laughs> it was more yeah. like finding yourself, you know? Yeah. I mean, finding what it is going to, what's going to make you happier in your life, you know? So, and loving yourself is, is really yeah. what I have learned. That's what I have. The bottom line is that's what I learned to do better with you, Kimmy, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, and so that was, you know, that first moment, but then the rest of it was also, so it's also that process of just, you know, learning to, learning to, that it was okay to spend the time discovering myself mm -hmm. you know yeah. and peeling back those layers and you know getting to the parts that were more light and and able to be present without an agenda you know and able just to open up to people and you know sort of let them see my lighter side mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. I just really had a hard time doing that before I took myself very seriously you know yeah. And um at least, you know, in certain parts of my life and and dating was one of them. Like I I just I had this big heavy feeling about it and it wasn't serving me well at all, you know. Mm. You know what I love that you're highlighting is the fact that this isn't really about the guy, right? Or if you're No. To this it's not about the girl, it's about you. Yeah. And 
you really, I mean, you you were such a beautiful example of that and how, when you started really recognizing how important you were and putting yourself first and being open and vulnerable, you started like attracting something totally different, but most of all that happiness factor that we keep talking about. Yes. Yes. And that, I mean, that really came to me through, you know, uh, Well, especially, you know, during and after the Phoenix weekend, when I realized that, you know, if I could really just open up and be there with people, Mm -hmm. you know, whether they were men or women or but just to, you know, to be and and be there without always, uh, you know, needing to have a certain outcome or, you know, judging Mm -hmm. myself. I, it was so freeing, you know, it's so, it's so freeing. So Mm -hmm. I, uh, and you know, when I came out of it, I really did feel like, even if a, you know, a relationship never came from that, I felt like it was completely, it was life coaching. It wasn't just dating coaching. That's how I Mm -hmm. looked at it, you know? Well, and luckily, of course it did and, help me. It I know. Really I was like, luckily, me. in your case, it actually did <laughs> land you a man, my dear. <laughs> so <gasps> let's get into yeah, that because yeah, absolutely. That your story is one that I tell everybody to to inspire mm-hmm. and motivate and give hope, and especially again in light of the Golden Bachelor that has highlighted that yeah. there is hope. Yeah. Um, no matter what age you're at and yeah. everyone has control over their own destiny, but you do have to do the work. Um, so yes. Yeah. Let's talk about your new man. So like what happened and how did all these like newfound skills help you land this guy? Well, um, you know, I think the overall thing that helped me was that lightness that I came back to it with. Yeah, you know, after that, Mm -hmm. this sort of lighter attitude toward everything, including dating, especially dating, you know, so, Mm -hmm. so when I, um, you know, and I'm not saying I didn't go out on, you know, several dates that were duds or weren't duds, but they just weren't, you know, somebody that I wanted to really be with. But but, you know, I could feel that I could feel that sexy confidence, you know, that I had it, that I had not felt before, you know, so I could feel, yes, I, you know, I'm dressing a certain way. I can make myself look pretty and, you know, and, and enjoy being treated like a girl, like a woman. And that's not a bad thing. That's another thing that I had to Ooh, sort of get up. Yes. I, I had to get over that, you know, uh-huh. like letting a man treat me like a lady, mm-hmm. you know, I, I have discovered how much I really enjoy that, you know, and I, you know, as a person who, you know, did the, thing we all do you went you know you went to college you would I was always in relationships so I wasn't used to being you know really courted because after the courtship is over you're in a different space with your partner in a long relationship you know Mm -hmm. but I sure enjoyed that I started to enjoy it a lot you know just having guys want to take me to a nice dinner and you know treat me like somebody that was you know valuable to them you Mm -hmm. know um I mean I guess I haven't really mentioned that but I think that's that's how you get that confidence is that you recognize you see your own special qualities you know you see your uniqueness and you see the value that you bring to you know whatever it is you're doing you know if it's a relationship you you bring your value to that and I had not connected with that and that's what the difference was so by the time I came across you know um the person that I'm with now Mm -hmm. I was really feeling that you know I was I was I was feeling good about myself and I was feeling like I didn't need to compromise, you know, 
And I was, I mean, of course, a rela- any relationship requires a certain amount of compromise. But I mean, I didn't need to settle just to be in a relationship with somebody. You know, I didn't need to settle for somebody that wasn't right for me. Mm-hmm. Like I could just be out there by myself going on a date here and there. And, you know, if that's all that happened, I was, you know, getting to the place where I felt like that was going to be okay, you know, and that I think that comes through. Love it. Love it. You know, so then what happened? So, like, let's, let's hear the story. <laughs> well, so, so what happened was I remember, um, well, he, uh, what he said was that he saw my picture on, you know, the app and he actually, um, you know, hadn't at formally joined it yet, but, you know, he was looking at it, thinking of going back on and, and then he saw my picture and he said, Oh, wow. I want to, you know, I want to meet her or something. So, and were these the pictures that you took? Of yes. Movies? Yeah. Uh-huh. That was the pictures from <laughs> Scottsdale. And he saw that picture and he was like, Oh my gosh, she's beautiful. I would love to meet her. And, but I, at the same time, I was sort of getting back into the game slowly. So like, if I were, if I were looking and I was actually on the app, I would like be, you know, I would be incognito. So I wouldn't be showing up and, Anyway, so it took him like three or four days. He saw my picture. Then I disappeared for three or four days. And he was like, oh, shoot. And then I popped back up again. But it's only because I had turned myself off for a while. So anyway, so I saw his um, profile. And it was, I mean, as I recall, I couldn't even tell really what he looked like. It was a very dark photograph. and, And he didn't have anything that gave me a good idea of what he looked like. But... His profile was so well written and so thoughtful and funny. And um, I could just tell that he was really smart. And, you know, just the things that he said about his sense of humor and what he enjoyed and what he, you know, I just thought, wow, I have to meet the guy who wrote this, you know. And, and I love, um, wait, and I remember you saying this too. I just want to highlight for people mm-hmm. listening because this is when I, I, you were, you were not paying attention as much to qualities like that before. Like I remember you going for the shiny objects a lot of yes. times. Yes. Yes. I mean, the man, things, I, right? yes. You know, mm-hmm. the man I, yeah, the guy that I dated, you know, for those two couple first two years was, you know, extremely handsome and good looking and, you know, nice and tall and, you know, <laughs> and this guy all that stuff. Tall, no, <laughs> no, but, but I mean, he just, he has so many wonderful qualities and he's tall enough. He's my height. So that's, you know, that's good enough. But we did, you know, we talked on the phone and we talked for a long time and laughed and, and, uh, and so then he, you know, asked me to meet him and we went on a date and I, I, I mean, I really, I had a great time on the date and I just, just was like, oh, if only I felt like more of a spark, you know, because I remember that as mm-hmm. wonderful as a good a time as we had and we talked and we, I mean, we sat there for, I think th- almost four hours or something in this restaurant, you know, and, um, but I came away thinking, well, you know, he just I just didn't feel that sort of chemistry, right? And I remembered mm-hmm. you, you know, saying to us in in our in our uh, at the retreat, you know, don't be hasty. I mean, maybe it's not going to be the man of your dreams, but maybe, you know, don't shut the book on it so quickly, and you know, go on another date if you enjoy their company. And, you know, so I did that. And I think like by the beginning of the third day, I just, I remember I was walking into the restaurant and he got got there before me and he was sitting in the booth and I was standing at the hostess station and I looked into the restaurant and there he was sitting and it was just the light and what he was doing and how he was dressed. I was like, 
oh, wow, he looks really, uh, you know, I saw <laughs> yeah. him in a, a totally different way, you know. And so I was so grateful for that, that I had given it a chance because the bef- before me, mm-hmm. I would have just said, nah, he's super nice, but, you know, that's not for right. me. That's And that's a huge um I think shift for you. Oh gosh. Because it yes. goes back to that whole like being open and available. And when you're in a shutdown right. place and really right. in that negative space, you are more judgy because you're really kind of protecting yourself anyway. So no one's exactly. gonna really be good enough, you know, if you right. think about it. And right. so it just it was a true testament. Actually, your whole story from start to finish is a true testament of kind of the charisma quotient, right? Like starting with the marketing, with your picture, like he wouldn't have seen you either had you worn those other dull clothes, you know, like it all worked together. But I love the fact that you built kind of that emotional connection. It was like that slow build. It wasn't the Mm -hmm. tornado that swept you off your feet that most people rely on. That right. ended up in this kind of healthy um, chemistry that you built with him. And, you know, research shows that people who start out this way last the longest. And then, I mean, I'm not ever putting time capsules on anything, Yeah, but there's sticking power to that because there's more. Well, that, you yeah, know? I did. I mean, I did learn that from the first relationship that I mm-hmm. really needed to slow down and not be you know, outcome driven and just be present and open to the possibilities, you know? So I definitely learned that I didn't want to be, I didn't want to rush into a relationship and I, uh, you know, an exclusive romantic relationship. I did not want to rush that. And I didn't want to feel pressure or feel rushed, you know? And um, so, you know, I talked about that with him, I think probably even on the first date when we were talking about our experiences and kind of what we were looking for, you know, Mm -hmm. that you get that question all the time. What are you looking for? And at that point, I really wasn't even sure anymore, you know, Mm -hmm. what I wanted. Um, Like, I think I had gone from saying I was looking for, you know, a long-term committed relationship to, uh, you know, I'm not really sure right now, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Well, you were and, really present with it though. And then yes, I think yes. it unraveled. And I think that. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, different. and, and, you know, he, he is so, you know, he's just so wonderful. I couldn't help, but I mean, he, and, and I think because I was, I don't know, open to it or something. I mean, he was just so, um, didn't feel threatened or Mm -hmm. like he was going to get hurt if he allowed himself to be effusive about how beautiful he thought I was, you know, and how smart he thought I was and how, you know, he would just share those impressions with me, but not in a cheesy way or a needy way. You know, it just Mm -hmm. made me feel like, wow, this guy really appreciates me you know? Uh, yeah. And what I love about this is that he really saw you and it's like yeah. a circle, right? Like from yeah. a girl who was hiding in her cocoon, afraid to be mm-hmm. seen, you yeah. opened yourself up to someone who really saw you and cherished you. And it's just so beautiful. And I would love for you to leave the, everybody with that. Oh God, that that statement you said was so right before we hit record, you said, oh, I'm yeah. the happiest. What did you say? Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I, I feel a little guilty saying this because I've been through a lot of life. I mean, you know, I have two sons and those were happy days of my life. And I, I had a wonderful family life and marriage with my husband of 30 years. But I mean, I am, I am so happy now. And I mean, in many ways, I am happier than I've ever been, you know. And, and I think a lot of that is because of my stage in life, you know, I mean, Mm -hmm. I I don't have the stresses of my career and my, and, you know, raising children and, and, you know, and marriage and all of that. But 
Uh, what I was telling you is that this age and stage of my life is a really wonderful time to be in love. It really is, you know, and I just, I did not imagine that I would say those words again, you know, oh. that, I mean, that I could fall in love at 65 and have it be like it is. I mean, like, I feel like a teenage girl again, you know, it's crazy. It's oh, crazy. I, I, what's so cool is I like even that little giggle, like I hear it yeah. in your voice. I, I see it in your smile. Um, yeah. It's just yeah. so beautiful. Leslie, and thank you so much for coming on and just sharing your story. Cause I know people listening to this, like is, are going to be really inspired by that. And is there anything you wanted to just say to anybody who maybe was thinking about, you know, like taking action and investing in themselves, but maybe they're having a hard time with like pulling the trigger or doing anything? Well, I think I think what you pointed out to me is really important. And if, if we're, you know, as caretakers, people like me are, you know, often think, it's just as frivolous or something. We don't even allow ourselves to think mm -hmm. about, you know, um, s spending so much of our time and energy and, and financial resources even, you know, to yeah. exploring, you know, who we are. And, and if we don't know that really well, what our needs are and what, you know, just maybe extracting some more joy out of life, you know, because that's really what, it's, you know, the time I spent with you, that's what it's given me. It, you know, it just has brought more joy into my uh, life regard. And I mean, that started happening before I, you know, met anybody, mm -hmm. but then, you know, and it just, it continues to build on itself. So, so don't, I just would say, I know it sounds probably kind of cliche or cheesy or something, but you know, be hopeful, not only don't lose hope, but especially to people, you know, in their later years, be hopeful because life is so open at this point in our lives. You know, there are all kinds of possibilities for new experiences. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think it's important that we give ourselves, you know, cut ourselves some slack, don't be critical, you know, give into our desires to, you know, sort of explore things to, that give us energy and joy. Mm -hmm. Because really, if not now, when, you know, oh, if not now, when and yeah, and that sense of happiness that you have, like, there, yeah. It is so hard to put a price tag on happiness. Oh my gosh. Time. Yeah. Like it's yeah. easier to, you know, invest in a car or computer or something that you can see. In right. Movie, or even in other people. But when it comes to this stuff, it's hard to like put even value to it. Cause like to your point, look how much it has leaked into every area of your life. And to that there's, I mean, what more could you want? I mean, that that yeah. is everything you know and that i'm not surprised that you attracted love because of that happiness factor so leslie thank you so yes. so so much for coming on i love i'm, I'm gonna still like be in contact with you because i love hearing yes. how you're oh, doing yeah. and... well i'm i'm following all of your you know stuff that i'm seeing on social media and through wow. you know because we still stay in touch i still stay in touch you know with the group so um <laughs> Yeah, I like to I like to keep up with what you're doing and I'm really uh I think you're just doing great work out there, Kimmy. Thank you, Leslie. All right. Well, we'll talk to okay. you soon. Oh. And thank you for joining me today, you listening. And this has been the Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, of course, Kimmy Seltzer. And remember, you can build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. And make sure you go to my site, KimmySeltzer.com, to see more ways I can help you learn how to date and feel more confident. I have actually something really perfect for you coming up and it's exciting because the holidays are around the corner. And so it's a little bit of a surprise. If you want to know how to gain that sexy confidence that Leslie has gained and master the art of flirting, come join my upcoming live workshop 
it just get a taste of it. It's December 12th. It's right around the corner where you will learn to ignite your flirting skills. And it's an interactive co-ed kind of workshop and it's filled with actionable insights. But here's the best part. Okay. I've not done this before. So listen up. I want to give you free access to it, but you have to be the first of 20 listeners to subscribe, review this podcast on Apple or Spotify and email a screenshot to hello at Kimmy Seltzer.com. Hello at Kimmy Seltzer.com. And I will give you a free access because I don't want anything to get in the way of your success. I want to make it super easy for you. Um, this is a valued ticket of $37, but I do want to give it to you for free. If you do this, um, if you miss the boat, you can still register at stophatingdating.com. but hurry the free spots are filling up fast. And if that is, you just pause now, subscribe, review, and email me your journey to the charismatic flirting starts now. And who knows, maybe you will be the next success story on my podcast after your first workshop or call. Remember, working on you is working on your dating life. That's all for now.